Welcome back. This is uh, Mark Weitzman. I want to continue on my uh, physics books playlist with uh, number four on relativity, version two. And um, so most undergraduate courses, a lot of them don't even have specific courses on relativity. They sort of pick it up as part of like like in the Berkeley physics course in the early 60s it was taught in volume one mechanics and um, you know, if you look at the Feynman lectures on physics volume one he's got four lectures chapter 15 special theory relativity relativistic energy and momentum and then space-time so that's fairly common and then most of the um, books you know if you go look at like Marion's book uh, you'll, there's always a final chapter in these electromagnetism books usually a final chapter in the undergraduate ones on like relativistic electrodynamics a long chapter and the same thing um, if you look in Griffith's book um, let's see what he has also a, uh, a final chapter on electrodynamics and relativity. If you look at um, Jackson's book, he's got uh, two chapters, not at the end, but in the middle of the book, he's got two chapters. Um, special theory of relativity, chapter 11. And then he's got chapter 12, Dynamics of Relativistic Particles and Electromagnetic Fields. It's actually a very good treatment. So um, this is fairly standard. Um, you know, like another example of a book that I've covered earlier, um, Modern Classical Physics starts with um, a couple of chapters. This is hard to see, but... They have Newtonian physics, geometric viewpoint, and then chapter two is a special theory, special relativity geometric viewpoint. So this is definitely a geometric viewpoint on special relativity. And then at the end of the book, he's got a whole part on um, general, uh, let me see if I can get there. It's a long book on general relativity. He's got like five or six chapters, sort of like a, a mini version of, of uh, MTW but more up to date. So um, that's sort of like one way to go. It's, it's the way that I uh, learned uh, relativity, you know, five or six different books. I didn't have a specific book that I read until I took a general relativity course. Now, oh, Zangwill also has um, at the end of, at the end of his book, uh, Near the end of the book, chapter 22, Special Relativity, and um, Lagrangian and Hamiltonian Methods in chapter 24. So this is fairly um, standard. Now, MIT does have a special relativity course. And they, they still use this old book by French in the, um, from the early 60s. It's actually a very good standalone book on special relativity. It's a little out of date, of course, but it covers a lot of the experiments and things that you wouldn't cover nowadays. It goes into pretty good detail on it. And it's only about a 250-page book, so that's a standalone book on special relativity. There's another book by a very good author, Special Relativity for the Enthusiastic Beginner. You can look at sample chapters on, um, by David Morin of Harvard, I believe. You can look at several chapters on his um, on his website. I don't know what happened there. Let me see if I get it now. You can look at several chapters of his book on his website, but it's a fairly detailed treatment, short, 250 pages about on um, kinematics and uh, dynamics of special relativity. Um, the classic book on special relativity, it's very idiosyncratic, was written, I think, in the mid-60s by Taylor and Wheeler. And it's one of those books that you either love or you hate. It's, um, you can get 
cheap versions. There are two editions. The second edition is even more wordy than the first edition. But they use like non-standard nomenclature and everything. And it's a hot, very geometric flavor to the book. And um, like I said, you'll either like it or you'll hate it. But um, it's different than any other book on special relativity. And they have like two editions, the first edition and the second edition. I actually recommend the first. It's less weighty, but they did add a little bit in the second edition. And you can get it for free on the website. Uh, they have all the files for the second edition, so you can download it. And um, so that's... Um, this covers most of like the beginning uh, freshman, sophomore level books on relativity. Um, and now here's a book that's it's written by a master, Wolfgang Rindler. I actually like this book. It's in three parts, relativity, special, general, and cosmological. It's very old fashioned. It doesn't use any modern mathematics, no differential forms, none of that stuff. It's very traditional tensor calculus components and everything. So if you want to get a sort of like old-fashioned treatment, especially of special relativity, he covers a lot of special topics like Rindler's space-time. Obviously, he invented that, but things that you often don't see in other um, relativity books. And, um, he, you know, he covers like how a sphere looks when it's traveling. Most people think it looks like it's contracted. It actually is contracted, but it doesn't look that way. Penrose showed that it looks just like a sphere but rotated. And he has like a chapter on relativistic optics where he covers this. And um, rigid motion of a uniformly accelerated rod, that's another good topic that's often not covered and everything. And in addition, he has a treatment of general relativity, which is so-so. But um, I recommend this book on the, for special relativity part. If you like an old-fashioned coverage, with components and you don't want to like all this modern notation. Um, the next book, this is a, um, a book that's more on general relativity. It's like a abbreviated version. It doesn't cover the field equations. It mostly just covers black holes and the solution. This is the first edition and there's a MOOC on this at, at MIT with videos and everything, OCW. You can still get it. but. Um, he came out with a second edition. The second edition you can get for free on their website. So here they have all the chapters of the second edition. And the second edition is definitely more complete, especially with respect to um, Kerr black holes, which are spinning black holes. And, um, but it's, it's sort of an easy introduction to general relativity if you, if you want one. Now the next book that I highly recommend this is the best undergraduate book on special and general relativity. And it's, it's by Anthony Z, who's a, a master author of advanced physics books. This is at the advanced undergraduate level. It's about 800 pages, but at the end of it, it treats some very advanced topics like twisters and anti de Sitter space time. The real good thing about this book is that it starts off really slowly. If you want to see how rotations are done in two dimensions and then three dimensions and Newtonian gravity and everything, and it takes an action point of view of the derivations, but it actually, like I said, it goes far, but it starts off very easy. So I, I really recommend this book for undergraduates. Um, now I'm starting to get into graduate level books. And this is the book when I wanted to relearn and general relativity. I, I got this book and I would recommend this book as the best book to for a graduate level or an advanced undergraduate level. It's by Jean Carroll. Supposedly he um, he didn't get tenure because he wrote this book and they didn't like a professor writing a, a really good book. But this is an excellent book on um, it's short. It's only 400 pages. It has a very good chapter one treatment of special relativity and flat, flat space time using sort of more modern notation and a very good treatment of manifolds. And um, he goes very far, but he doesn't, it's only like I said, 400 pages and he has a final chapter on quantum field theory and curve space time, 
which you don't often see. So if you need to review or learn relativity for the first time and you have a good understanding of special relativity, this is probably the, the book of choice. And I think you can get, there's a version of this which is much cheaper, a paperback version that came out a couple of years ago, I think it's $20. Um, the next book almost no one knows about, I'm only putting it here because when I um, first studied general relativity, after looking at MTW gravitation, when I went to a professor to take a course, he used this book. It's a hardly known book, Principles of Relativity Physics. It was published in 1965, but it covers relativity and special in general in a, and differential geometries. If you read the reviews, you'll see what I mean. It covers it in a way that hardly any other book covers and it covers topics like the wheel of Feynman, action at a distance theory, the Dirac equation in general relativity, uh, the Yang Mills B field. There's a lot of like, this is definitely graduate level, but there's a lot of like interaction with quantum mechanics in this book as well. Anyway, it's, uh, if you can get a hold of it, uh, use copy, it might be worthwhile. Obviously this is a ridiculous price, but I think you can get um, cheaper versions and you might w want to look at it. Now the classic book on general relativity, the one that I studied just before the Anderson's book, is by Meisner, Thorne, and Wheeler. It's the telephone book. It it it's both overrated and underrated. It's it's a great book, but it's not a, it's not the best book in my opinion on general relativity because it's too wordy. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here. It, it uses very very modern notation, and um, you know, it's one of those books, again, you'll either love or you'll hate. And um, I think the thing, one of the things I really like about this book, though, is it has a very good part two on special relativity uh, right away, very fast. Physics of flat space time, it has about seven or eight chapters. So that's an excellent um, place to start to learn, like, special relativity from an advanced point of view. Um, most of the calculations it does in the problems, and um, that's what I don't like about it that much. But it was a classic book. It was probably the best-selling book on general relativity. And uh, it's a telephone book because it's like 1,200 pages, but it really should only be about six or 700 pages. Just very wordy, which is typical of Wheeler. What can you do? Um, the book that I do recommend, which... A few years ago came out in um, paperback at a very cheap price, but I can't find it right now. So I wouldn't pay $200 for this, but there are um, paperback books that are available. This is a fantastic book written by Steven Weinberg. It's out of date with respect to cosmology and everything. It came out about the same time as um, the telephone book, Gravitation, but it didn't sell nearly as well. It lost out in the competition. But the great thing about this book is that Weinberg treats it from sort of like a field theory point of view. They say it's not a geometric book. He just doesn't emphasize the geometry. He does cover all the differential geometry that you need. But he does calculations in the book that are just fantastic, like the, radiation, the gravitational radiation emitted by a gas, like the gas ball, like the sun, just from the... Um, atoms and molecules going back and forth. No one else does that. It's like a quantum field theory calculation. And um, his writing is really, really good. And the calculations, he shows them all. This is typical of Weinberg. It's complete. He's got some advanced things in there, like representations of the Lorenz group and various things like that that you might not see in, in other books on general relativity. He bases everything on the equivalence principle and um, basic principles of uh, field theory. But he does cover all the geometry, as you can see from the um, equations. So um, this is definitely worth reading. And I, I, I hadn't seen it until like a few years ago when I started reading it. And I said, wow, this is good. This is really better than um, Meisner, Thorne, and Wheeler's gravitation. But it didn't sell as well. The definitive book on um, general relativity is by Wall. This was published in the mid-80s. Um, it covers a lot of advanced topics, and it's very difficult. But if you want to 
a reference book on general relativity. It's about 500 pages. Um, this is this is really the one. He covers black holes, causal structure singularities, initial value problems, and spinners, um, where you won't see these covered in other books on general relativity. Finally, there is um, Feynman had his own book. He didn't publish it. It was published after he, after his death. But he gave um, he taught a like a one semester or a course at Caltech in the early 60s on uh, Feynman lectures on gravitation, and it was taught from the again a quantum a spin to quantum field theory point of view, and it's amazing how far he got doing that, and it's you know it's a unique approach. Others have done it, but this is the only book that really treats this approach, the spin to approach. So um, definitely, I recommend it. So um, those are the books on relativity. As I said, depending upon where you are, you might want to get start with a standalone undergraduate book on special relativity. There are many more by like Springer and others that I haven't covered. Then there are advanced books on special relativity where they treat sort of like unusual effects like rotating systems and things like that. And then finally there's general relativity books. And every general relativity book usually starts off treating special relativity in an advanced way. So I would recommend going with uh, Z's book on gravitation and cosmology and then maybe reading Carroll's book on space-time and geometry and Weinberg's book on gravitation and cosmology and then um, you know if you want to go further maybe Wald's book on general relativity. Anyway I'll come back uh, next time and continue the series and I'll see you then. Bye bye.